Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Corey, and our trailer here just came out of winter storage, and we're tackling all those yearly maintenance items that we need to do on your RV. And today we're going to go ahead and we're going to tackle probably one of the most neglected areas of maintenance on your RV. And it's also one of the most important ones, because uh, if you don't maintain this area, it's one of the leading causes of RV fires. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you how to maintain your Dometic RV refrigerator and how to get it ready for the upcoming season. We have our access panel to our refrigerator here. And you can see up inside here, we, we have the insect screens in here to kind of keep the insects out. And I will say that goes a very long ways in helping maintain the cleanliness of the inside of this access panel. Just keeping the bugs and things in and out of here that happen to carry debris in here. And uh, so if you don't have these, I'll put a link down in the description because these things have worked awesome for helping to try to maintain our access panel and make sure that we don't have too many issues in there. So to get inside your access panel, they have these little clips right here. You can use a screwdriver or a quarter. Sometimes you can even give them your hand or you can put a pair of pliers on them. All you gotta do is just turn them and you do that on each side here. And, and once those are turned, you can come here and you just kind of lift up a little bit and this will come right out. Right here you can see we have our drain right here. Let me go ahead and push him out of there. So before we jump right into the video, I ask that you take a minute, subscribe to the channel, and set the bell to all, so you get notified of more videos on RV travel, tips, tricks, and everything else RVing. All right, so we do have a little bit of leaves and a little dust and dirt in here. We're gonna wanna blow all that stuff out of here so it's nice and clean. I always like to try to make sure that the insulation is tucked back from the electrical components you know electrical components when they're in use can uh, get a little warm and stuff and don't want you know any paper or anything like that touching stuff that's going to you know possibly be in warm things like that but our biggest concern is going to be over here with the burner and the chimney over here and we're going to want to make sure that we check this out and uh, that we don't have anything up inside here because like things like mice and bugs, um, insects, flying insects, things, they like to make nests if they do get in here. And they like that enclosed component and they love the smell of propane. So we'll wanna go ahead and we'll tear that apart and we'll take a look in there and see if there's anything that we need to clean and uh, be concerned about. All right, to go ahead and get started. We're gonna take out the screw right here at the very top. out and this little access panel is the one that we want to take out sometimes it's hard to get out the bottom edge has a little bit of a lip that sits up under the bottom side so sometimes you might have to pry this out just a little bit wiggle it a little bit and get that to come out and we should be able to completely remove him and take him right out to do our service. Okay, so inside here you can see our burner tube and our igniter, as well as our uh, thermal coupler here, to, so that it can sense that the flame is burning. And we wanna go ahead and we wanna make sure that there's no debris falling into the chimney piled up on here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull it out here and we're gonna show you the uh, burner that you can actually blow out and stuff too in case things do get inside there. Okay, so for the igniter, we're gonna take the screw right here out. Okay, so with our screw out, we can go ahead and we can pull out our igniter here and we can give him a little bit better closer inspection. And this is a spot, sometimes this hero will get gobbed up here on the end of this. Uh, debris that falls out of the chimney or whatnot can uh, land on top of this when the flames over top of it and it'll get kind of crusty and gummy and usually you can just kind of flake it off take a little piece of sandpaper clean up the end of this electrode just a little bit and so that you get a nice good spark when it's trying to uh, ignite we've had an issue in the past where we was getting delayed ignitions where it would click 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 and then all of a sudden it would light and you'd get a big woof of propane that would ignite and uh, that's never good when you have that issue you want to take care of it when I get in here and see what's going on with it and in our case it was it had a gob of stuff here on the end of the igniter so um, 
always good to check him out make sure that he's nice and clean and so that we can get good spark so the other area to, of concern is our burner back here right back in here where that igniter ignites the burner sometimes you can get rust and things that fall out of the chimney and it'll pile up on top of that burner ours looks pretty darn clean but i'm going to show you how to take go ahead and take that out if you do have to clean it and uh, blow it out with some compressed air or whatnot so we'll, let's go ahead and we'll take out the burner so to remove the burner we've got one screw down here that we're going to go ahead and take out and it'll take that whole bracket out with the burner as well okay so this little bracket it has a spot that I have to make sure that it lines right up exactly where it needs to be so it's kind of a little bit of a bear to get him out of there but you do enough wiggling and uh getting it back and forth here okay so there we got the bracket out this right here let me just gently bend him up this right here is your thermal coupler or some people will call it a flame sensor basically what it does is that when it ignites here at the burner and you have flame this here will get warm and that will send the signal back to the control unit to make sure that it knows that it's lit if it doesn't light it'll go ahead and it'll end up cutting out fuel so that you're you're not pumping your rv full of fuel we're gonna take the the nut off of the thermal coupler here okay so once we got that loose we can take that retaining nut off of the thermal coupler i'll pull him off and then this bracket can come all the way off with our burner attached to it right here so this gives us a little bit better chance to be able to get it out of the the unit and actually get some better eyes on the burner and we can make sure that it's not plugged up there um we can see if whether or not there's anything inside there we can blow air down inside the burner make sure we get everything out of this we don't want anything clogging it we want it to burn really really good and uh this one here looks pretty darn good i had did maintenance on this not too long ago so this right here is looking really good. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it back together. Okay, so go ahead and slip our bracket back on and grab our retaining nut here. Now, you don't have to worry about getting things lined up and things like that. It, the way the brackets on here are made, um, everything lines up. As long as everything's tight, everything's going to line up with the, where the burner needs to be where the flame sensor needs to be or the thermocoupler needs to be and as well as the igniter all this stuff will kind of lock into place where it belongs so i'll go ahead and we'll just give that nut a little bit of a turn make sure he's tight and now we can go ahead and we can maneuver him back into place okay so we finally got it back in what was fighting us was this back bracket right here where the burner wants to go in there here at the back side it's got a very tight little slot there as well as the bracket up here has to be fit at the same time but you know you're lined up when your screw hole down here right down in here is lined up then you know that the burner's in the correct position and everything's ready to go All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our igniter back in. If you're having a trouble with your igniter and it's not sparking at all, uh, it could either be the igniter itself or could be uh, one of the little control modules back here. But ours is working good. We just need to make sure that it's clean and, and ready to go. So we can go ahead and we'll slip him back in there. And as you can see, there's a the screw hole is only in one spot, so you can't mess it up can only go to one one spot and when it's there it's completely lined up with the burner okay so now that we've uh, got everything back together everything is in the right spot and it looks like everything's lined up good we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna test it out make sure that it ignites it should ignite like on the first click if, if it's everything's good so hey honey can you light the fridge on gas? All right, right there it was. One click, lit right up. 
and we're good to go. So we can go ahead and we can put our access panel back in. So make sure as you're putting your cover back on that you're making sure that your refrigerator drain is sticking out through the vent. As you can see with the screens, we had to cut a spot for it so that it could stick out and that it could drain properly. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and comment down below. And go ahead and drop some comments also in if you have any additional tips on what you do while you're maintaining your RV refrigerator. And until next time, guys, we don't catch you on the road. We'll see you in the next